Hello everyone. I'm so glad you could join me again on this Tuesday for a daily devotion. Last week we talked about Ephesians. Ephesians being one of my favorite books of the Bible. I'm sorry that my devotion last week ended so abruptly. You actually got to see my blooper instead of the actual taping of the devotion. But I wanted to continue with Ephesians. You know, through the next few weeks, let's talk about Ephesians chapter 1. Paul's letter to the Ephesians is different compared to many of the other New Testament letters that he wrote. Like Romans, Ephesians was not written so much to address problems in a particular church. More so, it was written to explain some of the great themes and doctrines of Christianity. In Ephesians chapter 1, verses 1 through 14, Perhaps it can be described like an athletic team, or a special project at work, or with other people, or a popular crowd at school. We've all experienced the feeling of wanting to belong, to know you've been chosen on purpose. Ephesians 1 verses 4 and 5, Paul explains that God chose us before the creation of the world. Before we knew God, He planned to adopt us as His sons and daughters through Jesus Christ. He did all this not just because we were good, but because He is good. Jesus died so we could become part of God's family. God chose us as His sons and daughters, and putting our faith in Jesus is how we take Him up on His offer. We can accept salvation and belong, or we can reject Jesus' message and continue to just live outside of God's love. God's desire has always been for us to be a part of His family and to live with Him forever. In God's family, our sins are forgiven, and we receive the Holy Spirit to guide us, comfort us, and remind us what Jesus taught us. We experience hope and peace here on earth and look forward to the, an eternity in heaven. When we make Jesus Lord of our lives, we become part of God's family forever. The Apostle Paul is explaining the spiritual blessings that we have by being and given to us by Christ. In verse 18 through 20, there are three wonderful promises of God given to all believers. His help, His riches, and His power. He has chosen us to love, to be His children, pure and righteous in His sight, through His Son, Jesus Christ. We are called to be His holy people. What a blessing to be called for that. God has called us to a hope in Him and His salvation and the reward of eternal life with Him. His hope is not like that of the world. It is not a hope without basis. Hope is God. It is confident expectation that He will bring to pass all that He has promised. The hope is based on the character of God that is both trustworthy and unchanging. God promises us His riches and His inheritance. We are heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. We are rich in all that Christ won for us on the cross. Victory over death, forgiveness of sins, holiness of God's eyes. God gives His mighty power to the Holy Spirit. We are strong in the Lord. His miraculous power, the power that raised Jesus from the dead, resides in us. God assures us that we can do the impossible through the power of Christ. We have the victory in Him. Allow these promises of God to fill your heart with a certainty of His deep love for you. So I encourage you to read Ephesians chapter 1 because this chapter reminds us of our extraordinary heritage in Christ, calling us to live lives of gratitude, faith, and boldness. After you have read the first chapter, answer these questions for yourself. How can the spiritual trust of this chapter transform the way I view my role in the body of Christ, the church? And how can I particularly live out my spiritual identity that Paul elaborates on in this chapter? And finally, how can I encourage others in my faith community with the truth expressed in this chapter. 
And I hope this chapter can help you cultivate an attitude of gratitude, of God's grace, awakening to the reality of who we are in Christ. Paul's prayers for the believers of of Ephesus not only included prayers for their success, but an appeal for their growth. So celebrate the value of your salvation in Christ. Till we meet again for chapter 2 next week.